Thank you very much. Thank you. For today, we have prepared a short demonstration of our smart face and how to solve a typical security incident. Before I start, our colleagues from ABS team, they were introducing a solution for a criminal investigation. And uh, just uh, to highlight where is the different difference or where is the, simply the border between the solution that we are going to showcase now. I will use an example. If you want to hit a little fly, usually you don't need a machine gun. You're perfectly fine, let's say, with the fly catcher. And uh, the main difference also for the solution is that the ABIS is a robust stack, robust solution for a criminal investigation and the smart face to position on the market with our partners is especially to solve common security incidents. You don't need to call an FBI or CSI team if something you know is being lost in the company or in the building. And uh, that's where the main difference can be found. <laughs> I will just wrap up what I have said yesterday about the public and preemptive security. And that's important is that your architecture should support your use cases, meaning you can process the video stream centrally, on the edge, in the cloud, in the combination. Of course, you need to browse through the history of the detected faces or human body, do the search, analyze the details. And uh, let's explain all of those features over the simple and very common example or the case that has happened to us just a few days ago. I left the company on a Thursday afternoon and I wanted to prepare my presentation also for a biocon over the weekend. So I left my laptop over there. And uh, okay, I just logged into my work from home, from my home PC so I could finish that. I didn't notice anything. Once I came back to the office on Monday morning, I found out that simply my laptop with my presentation that's supposed to be shown here was not there. And that was a big issue because that was not only about some PowerPoint there, but also about many company details. So I came up to our security manager, Michael, to help me out to solve this case. I came to him, oh my God, what should I do now? Oh, Robert, <laughs> what can we do? Okay, everybody in our company knows that uh, we have few cameras in the, in the office uh, to, let's say, not to showcase the smart face, but let's say somehow test our solution. We are doing a lot of things like re-identification, grouping of people by faces and things like that. So we are always uh, trying to improve all the things. So uh, what we can see here, uh, this is our floor plan, what we have. And uh, we have like three cameras in the office. One is in the sales department, one is in the near office department, and, uh, and one is uh, near to the gates. Uh, uh, gates is a number of the meeting room. Yeah, number of the meeting room. And this is a place where Robert is sitting, uh, not right now, but regularly, sometimes. That's from the worst time place to time. I could get. Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, we, were, we can maybe try to use those cameras and try to find out uh, if there's some suspect uh, uh, was walking around or something. So we will use uh, our uh, history search which is basically a timeline of all appearances, uh, of all faces, all pedestrians, etc. what we can detect. Exactly. This is a typical situation. You are looking for something and you don't know, you don't know what is that or who is that. So you are starting from top to down, trimming down the details, filtering according to various criteria. So we may start, for example, I know last time I was in the office was a 
Thursday. Thursday, okay. And then I came back on Monday morning. Yeah. So those are typical filters. Usually you start with to trim down the number of data, so not to browse large files. Yeah, on the right side we have uh, all the filters. You can see we can we can filter out the date range. Uh, uh, we can do the face filter by the image, by source type, by watch list, by many other things like uh, gender and uh, uh, estimated age. So let's do the. Uh, Let's start narrowing down the things. So I will choose the custom uh, time range, and I will pick, let's say, on the Saturday. No, oh, I can I can do it from Friday, as you said. You you've been there on Thursday, right? And till Sunday, let's say what what we will see. So we see all the uh, notification what we catch during the. During the daytime, this is. I this could is see my boss working over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw him also. Uh, yeah, Peter, have you been there? Well, well, well. <laughs> okay. Uh, you never know. <laughs> uh, but uh, as I see, there is some person. Uh, what we. What we really do not know. To be honest, I don't know this guy. He is definitely not from our company. Yeah, maybe maybe we can check uh, if he was there before. So I will use the face search uh, right now, which is a really powerful feature, and this was uh, this was introduced this year. Uh, so we can uh, search uh, over a large database of faces which were not identified at all, uh, and we can we can we can we can. Uh, Check if the person was there or not a few days before, and we see that uh, no, he was there just twenty uh, fourth, which was Saturday, I think. Yeah, that's and suspicious. Yeah, and fifteen thirteen until fifteen fifteen, so it was not really long time. So let's check. Uh, we can see here the the camera. So at first he was walking around the office. Camera, which was in the middle of the of our floor plan, or uh, as you remember, and we can see the guy was walking and searching for something. After that, he went to the sales part. You can see the tracklet here, so we were tracking him all the time. You can see he was walking there, looking around, probably searching for something. Yeah. Uh, he went again to the office part. I don't know, still searching for something. And after that, he end, ends up uh, at the gates, gate, gate camera. And we can see him just staying there, looking around, walking. Well, definitely, this is not a new developer from our company. Yeah, also, also not the cleaning man. <laughs> so. And now on the on the other screen we can see that uh, yeah we catch him again walking away with the laptop in his with, with in his hand so uh, yeah that's that's I think I think we have a guy this will be mm, our subject this is, looks like my laptop and obviously this guy is living down the stairs where we have an access control camera which by by uh, chance also is getting the images when the user is going around. So what else? Uh, we have the guy, but I think we may, he somehow needs to get to the building. What do you think? Yeah, sure. But uh, unfortunately, we do not have the cameras there. But uh, our, uh, the, the building management, they have a CCTV. Definitely, they have it on the parking. They have it also around the elevators, around the reception. Yeah, sure. So let's ask, we ask the, definitely we ask the management of the building. We also, of course, call police, meanwhile, and we ask them uh, if they do have some sort of video footages, we can take and have a look what was going on there. Yeah, uh, and uh, that take us to our uh, investigation part of the smart face, where we can use those videos to, uh, to 
let's say, uh, analyze them faster than real time, as it was mentioned before. So let's say it's the same uh, functionality, which is smart face functionality, and we use it also for the video investigation. So we can add the videos. I, I would like to just highlight, meanwhile, that you are not limited anyhow with the number of videos to be processed only by your CPU and GPU. So it's a fully scalable solution if you have a need to process large number of video files in parallel, it's easily to be solved by just adding more and more resources. Yeah, I uploaded the video from the turnstile right now, so I will go and uh, try to analyze the video. So it's, it's there in the, in the list of the files what I uploaded before. You see that uh, the video is not processed, it's ready for process, so I will click on it and I can see the whole detail. I see that there is no more information, not a lot of information, it was not processed yet, so I will do the processing. And there is a couple of things what you can set or you don't need to set, but this one is quite important. This is where, uh, this is the date and time when the video was recorded. So uh, when we received the video from the uh, security, uh, building security, uh, they told us that this video was recorded at, uh, uh, at five, uh, uh, three, three o'clock and five minutes. So I will just uh, uh, choose the Saturday and uh, 15.05 and I will do the processing. It's very important to align all of the video footages to the same start date and start time. Otherwise, that would be a lot of mess in the data you detect it or you match. So the video of process is quite short for the, for the presentation. And I can see here that one uh, face was detected. And I can check. And on the turnstile, I see that there was a person passing the turnstile, probably he was also chatting with the, with the officer down there and uh, trying to get in. Maybe we can also in. check uh, what other metadata do we see about this person when you check the yeah, detail. Yeah, of course. So uh, there is a lot of metadata what you can use for, uh, for further analysis. You can see uh, that the person is wearing the mask. It's a male, 43, and also the quality of the, of the template and detection itself a lot of information. And uh, you can also register such user to create some sort of watch list in case this person will appear again, you will be immediately notified or simply use it for other actions with the authorities. Yeah, I, I have also a video from the parking lot, so maybe we can check that. I will upload them. Okay, I have two of them, so I can decide who, which I will I will process. And now again, I will uh, change the date and time uh, for the uh, for the uh, export time of the video. So it was 15:20, and I can change also the detection. Uh, parameters here. So if I want to uh, analyze the video faster, I can, uh, I can change those uh, uh, parameters. And also, uh, if the view of the camera is placed on that way, that the faces are small and we need to detect them, I can change also the detection uh, parameters. I, I don't think so. There is more like five uh, faces there, so I will process the video. Uh, this one will be processed probably fast because uh, 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 because I put like one second coarse, coarse grain interval, and I see there was like three detections uh, there, and I see again that this person is leaving the building here, and probably uh, yeah, probably this is this is also his car. So maybe we can we can use this uh, license plate uh, for the for the investigation or, or passing the information to police. Exactly. So within a few minutes, we were able to trim down the data over the three days, and this is especially useful.
considering uh, deployments like uh, shopping malls, airports, uh, simply large buildings where you have heavy traffic, you can really accelerate the investigation and minimize the further damages, of course. Robert, let's, let's check it again in the history page. Uh, how, right now, how we can see the, uh, the, tr the, the, the person movement. Okay, All so of the detections from the offline video footages together with the cameras uh, we have in the office now are being merged within the one history preview. And now we can see that this person entered the building uh, by a turnstile, moving from office to sales to office to gates to gates again to stairs, and he was leaving from the building at uh, 15.20.04. So uh, basically we can we, we have a full history of the, of the person. Even if those cameras are not connected into the smart face itself, so you can use whatever camera uh, in the building available. Yes, definitely. It will never happen that all of the cameras will have all the details processed. Ooh, that was scary. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe also share with us, Michal, uh, what's next within a few months we can expect to add much more powerful features to the investigation? Yeah, as you mentioned also yesterday that uh, we are working on porting all the neural networks for the edge devices, which will also speed up the things. We are also moving the solution to the cloud. With the edge technology, it will be, it will be much easier. And we are also working on the uh, attributes, person attributes detection and also re-identification of the people. Exactly like this. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.